contendeth. In other words, Job sees himself as having a contention with God at this point. Job has come to a place and he says, well, I, you, and my three, three friends must be right about me having a case against God because God's against me and so I must be against Him. And God says, Job, let's evaluate that. Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? Speaking of the Almighty. He that reproveth God, let him answer it. God says to Job, let your friends, if they want to reprove me, which is what they're doing, let them be the one that answers this question. Here's Job's response. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Job says, oh, sorry. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us today to see clearly how to react in the matters that will come into our life when your enemy would be bringing accusations against you, God, help us not to blindly believe false accusations against you. God, help us to see how much spiritual discernment we need to have. God, we recognize that this man, Job, was a man that there was none like in the whole earth. And so, God, we certainly, if Job went through this situation and had a hard time seeing your hand in it, God, how much more difficult it would be for people like us. Lord, help us by having this example, by having this truth, for us to have in our hearts so clearly ingrained upon us your character and your nature. God, our character and our nature. And then, God, how you react towards your people and how we must react to you. Help us to know that so well that we wouldn't make the mistake of reproving you or even believing that you are against us when you're not. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, let's ask the question, uh, for sake of review and also to help us with our thinking today. Was God against Job? No. No, it wasn't. How do we know that? Because he protected his life. He protected his life. So God's hand, God was actually, when, when it looked like God was against Job, God was actually preserving Job's life. Okay, that's a good argument. But what's another way that we know? Yeah. One, chapter 1, two, he, tell, he tells Satan, you know, have to consider my servant Job. And he yeah. Description. God was pleased with Job. I mean, we know from what God's Word says about God's man that God said Job was wise, he was upright, and he feared God and eschewed evil was the way God put it. God said Job's a righteous man. God wasn't against Job. We know from the benefit of at the beginning actually having the understanding of the source of where all the problems Job had came from, we know where Job's troubles came from, don't we? I mean, the whole time that Job's friends are bringing these false accusations, we're smugly sitting by saying, no, you guys are wrong. Uh -uh. The reason it happened to Job is because God was using him and because God uh, was vindicating his character against Satan. God was using Job to vindicate that he's a good God to Satan. And so we know, we can sit by and say, Job, you and your friends are all wrong. Ha, 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 we know what happened. But the thing is, is that Job wasn't let in. God didn't send a messenger or an angel to Job and say, Job, in 40 days, you're going to be afflicted. And then after that, I'm going to restore you, and you will be a testimony for me. Job wasn't privy to it all. He knew was he was suddenly destroyed. And God didn't tell him, I'm going to do this. Didn't give him a dream or a forewarning. It just happened. And he found out about it when it happened. And so we know it was going to happen before we ever heard about it happening, don't we? You begin at the chronologically reading the book of Job. The first thing you find out happening is... God gives Satan, the first thing with regard to Job, God gives Satan permission to take his possessions. And the second thing we see is God gives Satan permission to harm him physically, but protects his life. Now, here we are, we're in the time of counsel, and God is beginning to speak to Job. And we want to look at two things that God says to Job. First of all, God points out that no man has his perspective. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, 
Who is this that darkeneth counsel? We're in verse 2 of chapter 38. Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? And so, Elihu builds this logical argument that says, Job, you're contending with God, so you must be wrong because you're fighting God, and anyone that fights God is in the wrong because God's righteous and He's never wrong. Good argument, but God said He was contending without knowledge. In other words, God says, Elihu doesn't know what's happening here. He's just trying to... He has started with a false assumption that I'm against you, Job, and I'm not. And so God says to Job, He says, quit listening to this fool. Quit listening to this fool because he doesn't know. Friend, I want to something. We listen to a lot of counsel more than we listen to many times, I believe, the Word of God. You know, you ought to be established in what the Scripture says before you ever go to confirm it with wise counsel. I believe in wise counsel. The Bible teaches it all the way through. You ought to find people that love the Lord and love His Word. And I'm not talking about people that say they love the Lord and love His Word. I'm talking about people that know God and know His Word. And you can tell folks like that. And before you ever go to counsel, though, you ought to get in the Word of God and you ought to search it. I want to tell you something, friend. If you went through suffering like Job went through, would it be worth your time to read uh, from cover to cover the Scripture before you did anything else? I'm telling you, if you needed God and needed answers like Job did, it'd be worth your time to read the whole Bible straight through. Matter of fact, let me help you with something. If you're in a real tough situation in your life, it might be a good thing for you to take off work two or three days and just listen to or read through the whole Bible all the way through. I'm just telling you, it would be a real practical use of your time. We'll take off work or we'll, we'll set aside time in our life to do different things. And I'm telling you, some of the time, one of the best things we could do will be to take a pause in our life and say, I've got to have a Bible answer for this. got to have a Bible answer for this. And if you would just uh, act in faith that way, you'd find that God will work in your life a lot more than He does by your casually thinking about something, seeking counsel, and then haphazardly forming an opinion and acting on it. And God says, Job, all this advice that you've received from your friends is garbage. What are you doing listening to it? And then God begins to show his nature in contrast to man's nature. The first thing that he points out is, is his eternal nature. He asked Job some questions that put things in perspective. Okay, you want to contend with me, Job? Let me ask you some things. In order to contend with somebody, you have to be an equal. A good competition makes people equal, right? If we have a good wrestling match, what do we do? We, we weigh in, don't we? And then, uh, if, you, if you get in upper ranks and upper levels, boy, there's uh, different levels of contention, aren't there? You want to go and you want to wrestle somebody? Well, you need to be on the varsity if you're going to wrestle varsity players. You need to be college level, division one, two, or three, and you need to be in the same division if you're going to wrestle in college. You understand what I'm saying? You're not competition unless you qualify by your past. And God says, well, let's go ahead and find out if you qualify to contend with me, Job. Go ahead and find out. Let's see if we're on the same level here. If we're comparing apples with apples here before you bring your accusation that I'm against you so you've got the right to be against me. First of all, let's just, we'll just read all the way through chapter 38. As a matter of fact, let's just, let's just do some reading in the Scripture. I want you to think about these things. I won't, I'll try not to comment. He says, Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Job, you want to be in contention with me? Where were you when... In the beginning, I created the heaven and the earth. What is he pointing to? His eternal nature. God says, I didn't have a beginning, but I began you. I didn't have a beginning, but I started the earth, and after that, I started you. So, Job, you're not even as old as the earth. You're sure not eternal like I am. Who has laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who has stretched the line upon it? He's talking about terms of build, builder's terms, carpenter's terms. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? All kind of people think that they're smarter than God. And they can't even explain. They can explain the orbiting of our planet and why it spins on its so-called axis because of gravity and gravitational pull and etc., and God says, yeah, but I put it there. Tell me how I did that. 